Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 130. Six podcasting cliches you should avoid, <laughs> like the plague. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is the award-winning how-to podcast about podcasting and using Audacity. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. This episode is going to probably boil some people's blood, and that's a good thing. This will be controversial content, and I would love to hear from you in the comments for this episode. Please go to the audacity to podcast.com slash 130 for the show notes and to comment there to let me know what you think about this, whether you agree or disagree. And please know, first of all, this list of things I've made is not directed at anybody. So I'm not just targeting someone in my sites and saying I want to attack everything that they do in their podcast. So if you do some of these things, then it's probably coincidental that you also do these things. I've made some of these mistakes before too, so this isn't just my spitting out there at other people. I'll tell you the mistakes I made. But talking about podcasting cliches, not just things that we say, but things that we do, I've got six of them for you, and I'll count down from these. These are, I could almost say maybe the top six, but I won't necessarily call them the top six, but they're my top six. Number six. Ignoring international and time shifted audiences. You have to remember that a podcast can be consumed really almost anywhere. And that means more than just the United States of America. Many times you'll have listeners in Canada or United Kingdom or other countries where they don't know the holidays that you're observing. So you might say, hey, everybody, it's Memorial Day, so have a happy Memorial Day and really appreciate what Memorial Day stands for and go celebrate a mem Memorial Day like a good citizen would do. Well, that that's kind of alienating there because many people might not know what Memorial Day is if they're not Americans. <laughs> many Americans might not even know what Memorial Day is. And you've just alienated your audience or you might even do worse just to say, hey, because of the holiday today, I'm not going to do an episode. W what holiday? Who It could be, what, International Pancake Day? It could be Eat a Donut Day? Or what kind of holiday is it? So keep this in mind when you're talking with your audience, whether you're doing an audio podcast or a video podcast. A good idea would be just assume, as, it, as far as it comes to holidays, Assume that Christmas is, and New Year's Day are the only holidays that almost everyone knows about. Anything else, you might want to either explain or just say it's a United States of America holiday. But also keep in mind your certain colloquialisms or sayings that you may have that only mean something in the United States of America or maybe even just in your region. I really try hard to watch out for these things. I know that I slip, I mess th miss things because I am an American and I don't think about every single thing I say. I try to watch for these things, but consider certain things that just phrases that literally do not make sense. You, for example, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, some people might know what that means. A lot of people might not, especially people who aren't American might not know what that means. Now, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. But watch for those kinds of things where you're using some type of metaphor or some type of common saying that people have, a colloquialism. Watch out for those and try to avoid using them in your podcast. Also, remember that your podcast may not be listened to or watched immediately after you release it. It could be right then. It could be a week later. It could be a month later. It could be years later. That's what we mean when we refer to podcasting as time-shifted content. You can listen to it really at any time. So try to avoid relative measures of time, like saying this Friday or tomorrow or yesterday. Now, if you're telling a story, then you could say something about yesterday this happened or tomorrow I'm having a doctor's appointment. Those kinds of things where it doesn't, the, the actual timing of it doesn't actually matter 
to your audience, then it might be okay to use the relative dates to say last week, last year, whatever. Then people get a relative idea of how long ago or how close this is to right now. But if you're talking about something that does involve the audience that they need to know about, then make sure you use absolute dates. If I were to say for you, the deadline for the webinar is this Friday, which Friday is that? Is that actually this Friday? Is it last Friday? Is it a Friday some 10 years ago, however long you've been listening to this podcast? Well, it could be any Friday, really, unless someone listens to the episode immediately after it's released then they might know which Friday you're talking about. But even though your episodes are usually downloaded the most within the first three days, especially the first two weeks are when you'll receive most of your downloads, but even though the episodes are downloaded that quickly, does not mean they're listened to that quickly. I am personally behind on my podcast listening. I'm several episodes behind on some podcasts. I'm only an episode or two behind on other podcasts. I'm perfectly caught up with other podcasts. So when someone just says this Friday, that means nothing really to me. So you really need to give the dates in your podcast. So I might say we're having a podcaster's roundtable on Tuesday. Eh, Bad. I could instead say we're planning to have a live podcaster's roundtable on Google Plus on Tuesday, June 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's GMT minus five. That's much better, much more specific. And by the way, as of our planning today, that is accurate too. We're planning to have a great podcasters roundtable talking about media hosting. If we, for some reason, have to reschedule it, you can always find the episodes or if we've already recorded it, you'll be able to find those episodes over at podcastersroundtable.com. But it will be a great conversation. I'm really looking forward to this. But also think about terms with or date references using the year because people may listen to your content a year later. This is especially important if you have timeless content where you're not just covering the weekly news, but you might be commenting on a TV show, a movie, doing some kind of review, or you're giving how-to information. Like most of the episodes of the Audacity to Podcast, I would say are timeless material because I'm not addressing specific latest news. Most of it you can go back and listen to at any time. I will someday go back and update certain things, like I might update my stats information. I'm going to update my how to leave feed burner information and all of that. So keep this in mind that your audience might be international and they might be listening to you much later than you would expect. So try to be as continentally neutral as possible as well as be specific with your dates when it involves your listeners. If you're telling a story, you can say, last week I went to the dentist, or I'm supposed to have a dentist appointment tomorrow. That's fine. Your listeners don't really need to know exactly what date it will be, but they do need to know the relevance or the relationship to when you're speaking. But if you're giving your listeners a deadline like, hey, please sign up for my newsletter by this Friday, then they need to know the absolute date for it. And share the year. I would say you don't have to share the year every single time you mention the date, but at least once during the podcast so people get the context to know that when I say Tuesday, June 18th, I'm talking about 2013. So mention that maybe just once and then it would be okay to let that go for the rest of the episode. So number six, ignoring international and time-shifted audiences. Number five, having podcast or weekly or something similar in your show title. Yeah, it's true that you are most likely producing a podcast. And the definition of a podcast is essentially episodic audio or video content distributed over the internet via RSS, which stands for Rich Site Summary. Some people think it stands for really simple syndication. That's kind of a different layman's uh, definition for it. But uh, distributed over the internet via RSS with enclosure tags. That is a podcast. Having audio on a website is not a podcast. Having a radio show is not a podcast. Live streaming, like what I normally do when I record the Audacity to Podcast on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, GMT minus four at the Audacity to Podcast.com slash live. That live streaming is not technically podcasting. 
And also think about some people will go to your website and click play on your podcast episode. So they'll download it right there. They might be streaming it through a mobile app. They might be watching you live streamed and it might be so much more. It might might be on YouTube and YouTube isn't a podcasting platform. It's a video platform. You can't subscribe via RSS, at least straightforward. You can't. It is possible to, but straightforward. You cannot subscribe via RSS in a podcast application. So many of these things no longer fit that technical definition of what a podcast is supposed to be. So when you include the word podcast in your title, you're really limiting yourself to that medium in your title. Now, you may think I made this mistake with my Once Upon a Time podcast, which is over at oncepodcast.com, but the actual name of the show of our podcast is Once, and then I add to that once Upon a Time podcast as a sort of tagline, but the actual official name is Once. Yes, I attached the media to it because, of course, Once.com wasn't available. And radio, well, I'm not a big fan of calling anything uh, on the internet radio, and I'll get more into that in a little bit. But do keep this in mind when you're referring to any kind of media restrictive title, like a magazine or blog or book or radio or podcast or video, or web TV, or anything like that, try not to include that in your title. Make your title stand alone by itself. How many books do you see out there that might be something like 48 Days to the Work You Love book, or Rework book, or Book Book? Well, some people do that. But they don't include the name of the media or the medium inside the title. So try to avoid including that in your title as well. There are exceptions to this. Of course there are. But just keep that in mind. Because what if someday we all change the name from podcast to something else? Do you have to change all of your names and cover art and domains? Or what if you decide that RSS isn't the best way for you to distribute your content? You're doing something different. You get a bigger audience when you live stream then do you really want to keep calling yourself a podcast? Maybe the best generic term would be show, although that's very nondescript. So you might want to just consider naming yourself something that doesn't require a medium format attached to that. But also be very careful with time-restrictive words in your title, like daily, weekly, monthly, anything like that. If you publish a podcast weekly, then it's not really necessary to add the word weekly to your title. But if your show is about weekly events, then it might fit a whole lot better, like The Daily Show or uh, certain newspapers that are called something or other weekly or daily. Those kinds of things fit very well because they are about generally about daily events, weekly events, time-sensitive events. But if your podcast just releases on a certain schedule, you don't need to name that podcast with that schedule in the title. That's a bit cliche. And you'll also hit a wall if you decide to skip an episode or you change your publishing schedule, like many podcasters will do and maybe should do during certain holidays or uh, summers, certain seasons and such. And I will, I am changing my schedule for a couple of the other podcasts that I produce And we don't call them weekly or monthly or anything like that. But if you are no longer producing or publishing the podcast according to that schedule, then what do you do? Should you change the title? Or should you change the domain from weekly to monthly or bi-monthly or anything like that? I don't recommend that, but you see what the problem, what problem this creates. This also sets certain expectations on you by your audience. When they say when they see weekly as part of your title, they're going to expect a weekly episode almost no matter what. I, I like what Cliff Ravenscraft does with one of his podcasts that he had called uh, The Almost Daily Devotional. And that was, I liked that because he tried to make it daily, knew he couldn't make it daily. So it's almost daily, but it almost never is daily. And sometimes it's not even weekly, but. He has some fun with that title anyway, and that that can work. So you could call yourself the almost weekly whatever podcast. 
So number five, having podcast or weekly in your show title. Number four cliche to avoid in your podcast, using an RSS icon, microphone, or headphones in your cover art. Podcasters tend to like to be very meta. After all, I host a podcast about podcasting that's for podcasters. Just imagine if someone started a podcast about podcasts about podcasting and they did it for podcasters who podcast about podcasting. Please don't do that, but you get the idea. When we add these certain images to your podcast cover art, it also adds to this meta-ness or redundancy or it's just really cliche to have it on there. This is kind of like a music album having prominent music notes on every album that they release. Or maybe a book cover shows a book on the cover. Or maybe a movie shows a DVD or Blu-ray disc on the front cover of the movie, not just to show you this is a DVD or this is a Blu-ray, but it's actually part of the cover. It's all too meta. It's too cliche. Try to avoid that like the plague. If your podcast is about those kinds of things, like if it's a podcast about podcasting, then a microphone works really well or RSS icon works really well or headphones work really well. If it's a podcast about listening to music or about music in some way, then musical notes or headphones, that kind of thing can work really well in the cover art. But just because you have a podcast is not reason enough to think that you should have an RSS icon or a microphone or headphones or a combination of all of these things in your cover art. That's that's just way too cliche. I like what Blueberry says on one of their pages about uh, podcast logos. They said, considering consider a branding image that is unique, one that will stand out in directories. And if the old style microphone logo pops into your mind, you might want to think again. I, I love that there from Blueberry. And it's very true. Unless you are talking about microphones or recording or listening to music or those kinds of things, avoid that kind of cliche artwork. You almost never see the medium icon displayed prominently as part of the design of something. It's always, if they even show it, it would just be to show you that this is the DVD edition, this is the book edition, this is the whatever, musical edition. And hey, if you need podcast cover art, please keep in mind that I do design custom podcast cover art, and I love doing this for podcasters. You can check out my portfolio and request some podcast cover art over at podcastcoverart.com. And I would love to work with you and avoid some of these cliches. And if you look at my portfolio, you will see that there have been a couple times that I have to admit, I followed the cliche and I put a microphone on someone else's podcast. Maybe not the best thing, but it does look really good, I think. It's one of my favorites, actually. But that's number four, using an RSS icon, microphone or headphones in your cover art or any of these kind of cliche images. Number three. Listing in the podcasting category. You've probably heard this before, that this is my pet peeve, and you've probably heard it from people other than me. I think I mentioned it once on Podcasters Roundtable, but I think both Ray Ortega and Dave Jackson have mentioned it on their podcast that it was my pet peeve. And I this is really a big pet peeve for me. And that is going into iTunes and looking at the podcasting category in iTunes and seeing a whole bunch of podcasts in there that have nothing whatsoever to do with podcasting, except for the fact that they are a podcast. See, just because something is a podcast does not mean it belongs in the podcasting directory or that category of any particular site. iTunes, for example, this being the largest podcast catalog and directory there is out there, iTunes has a specific podcast section. That's where all the podcasts go. Inside of that, they have a podcasting section. Now, if they expected everyone who has a podcast to put their podcast in the podcasting section of podcasts, then that's really redundant. That's meta for them and unnecessary. So when you're doing this, like when you're putting your podcast out there in different categories, 
it should not go in the podcasting category unless that's something you regularly address. Like Podcast Answer Man, School of Podcasting, Podcasters Roundtable, Podcasting Passion, um, Podcaster Studio, Podcast Quick Tips, The Audacity to Podcast, all of these kinds of podcasts are podcasts where we talk regularly, well, all the time, we're talking about podcasting. So we belong in that category. And there are many others out there too where they regular talk, regularly talk about the art, technique, style, education, knowledge, tools, skill, all of that of podcasting. What's also interesting, if you go to iTunes, and I have a link to this in the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 130, but if you go to the technology section of iTunes and then further drill down to the podcasting section of the iTunes podcast catalog, look at the new and noteworthy section of this And you'll see so many of those podcasts have nothing whatsoever to do about the art, technology, or skill, or anything like that of podcasting. They are simply a podcast. Also ironic, at least at the time of this recording, June 17th, 2013, I I noticed that many of these podcasts in their podcast cover art have the very cliche microphone headphones or rss icon in their cover art so that's a sin on multiple levels if you're in there you might want to change something but i don't think any of you are in there so that's number three listing in the podcasting category number two saying best the emphasize there only or number one podcasting is different from other kind of media because it's the statistics on podcasting and podcast listenership are not easily accessible like it is for TV viewership or cable views or television show watches or anything like that. It's really hard to analyze these cross show metrics and statistics in order to figure out what podcast is really the most popular. But there are certain places where we get indications of things. So all of these phrases, though, could be detrimental to your reputation and make it sound like you're some arrogant person if you use these terms inside of your podcast. First of all, best is highly subjective. You might think you're the best, and your some of your listeners might think you're the best, and they may write that in reviews to say that you're the best or your podcast is best, but your competition might also say they're the best. And their listeners might say they're the best, and you might have more people who say you're the best. They might have more people who say you're the best. Who's really right and who is really the best in this case? It's way too subjective. So don't even try using the term best. Then there's the word the and an emphasized the. Like I could say, this is the podcast to learn about everything. I know because I know so much. This is the place to go. You don't have to go anywhere else. You shouldn't go anywhere else because this is the podcast about audacity and how to podcast. You see the problem? It's a bit too arrogant. And there is a difference, though, in how you emphasize this. Simply saying the podcast for and whatever you cover is one thing. But if you emphasize the the in it to say the podcast about this, then you're really trying to get the idea across that you're the hottest, coolest, best, only conceited, bloated, (laughs) whatever, that you're really kind of being arrogant by saying it's the, like it's the definitive or the ultimate or the only one necessary for anyone to listen to. I know this isn't how many podcasters intend this, but it can come across like this. And also the term or the word only can be misleading a bit. I made this this mistake in our podcast, Are You Just Watching, over at areyoujustwatching.com. And I don't host it anymore. I gave it over to my co-host, Eve Franklin. But we used to say the only podcast that shares critical thinking for the entertained Christian. And you know what? That was totally true. It was the only podcast that shares critical thinking for the entertained Christian. But it really followed quite a simple formula, and that is the only and any kind of unique tagline you can come up with. 
Similarly, for my Clean Comedy podcast, I could say the only podcast that gives you seasoning packets of clean comedy to flavor your day. That's really my trademark. So, of course, I'm the only podcast that does that. See, when you say only like that, it can be misleading. And is it really the only one? I know for a while, a podcast that I listened to about a TV show that I was watching would say the only podcast dedicated to this particular TV show. And that was true for quite a while. I don't know that it still is true. I haven't kept up with the TV show or the podcast. But just be careful because if ever someone else starts another podcast, then you're no longer the only podcast for that show. And also, you can be the only anything if you use a unique tagline. The only podcast where we wear pink while we podcast. Whatever. You can get ridiculous with that. And then number one can be misunderstood. Now, all of these things I was thinking about here with the cliche, I was thinking about um, some of my uh, friends that host another Once Upon a Time podcast over at dvmpe.com. And they frequently call themselves the number one podcast for the TV show Once Upon a Time, and they joke around with that quite often. But someone sent in this scathing email, really attacking them for saying that they were the number one podcast. And they they joked about this and talked about, well, their, their podcast network's number one Once Upon a Time podcast. But that also kind of helps make this point that saying number one is also very relative. Like, I can rightly claim that the Audacity to Podcast was voted number one technology podcast in 2012. Yes, I have that claim. I have an award on my desk that says, well, actually, it doesn't say number one on it. I just realized that. It just says 2012 Podcast Awards Technology, the Audacity to Podcast. But you could say easily, I can still claim that I was awarded or voted the number one technology podcast in 2012. But can I actually claim to be the number one technology podcast in 2012? No, not at all. And I've never claimed that and I never will claim that because that's just, that's ridiculous to say that I'm the number one technology podcast in 2012 or even just ever. No, that is not mine to claim at all. And it's far from being true. But I can say I was the number one technology podcast in the podcast awards for 2012. That's accurate. But you see, I had to qualify what does number one mean. So when you claim to be number one, and sometimes that can be fine to claim that you're number one, it could be that special uh, credibility, or it can let people know or anything like that. When you're claiming to be number one, you should qualify it with some kind of specific truth or else have like a very broad confirmation of the fact that you're number one. For example, are you number one on Google search results, on iTunes, on YouTube, on Bing? Do you have the most listeners? Do you have the most reviews? Do you have the highest rating? Where are you getting the idea that you're number one? Because any one of these metrics could put you in a different position relative to others in your same niche. For a while, with my Once Upon a Time podcast, I could claim we're the highest rated Once Upon a Time podcast, which just meant we had a higher rating than any of the others. But someone who has 4,000 four-star reviews, and I have one five-star review, you, you see the problem there. Yeah, I'm higher rated than they are, but the metric doesn't compare directly with each other. But... If you have all of these things, like you're the number one on Google, you're the number one on iTunes, you're number one on YouTube, on Bing, you do have the most listeners if you actually can compare that with others, you do have the most reviews, you do have the highest rating, all of that. If you have all of those things or most of those things, then you probably can claim to be number one. But do you really want to claim to be number one or to gloat about it? There are ways that you can do this discreetly, but just be careful with it and don't push it out there all the time. I like what Dan Miller does with his 48 Days podcast, and it's a good illustration of this. On his cover art, it says number one career podcast in iTunes. Note, it didn't say number one career podcast. It didn't say number one podcast in iTunes. It was more specific to say number one career podcast in iTunes. Now, when you read his description, he even further qualifies it because he can put more words in there. 
And whoever wrote this description said, this show consistently sits in the top 50 under the business category on iTunes and is often at number one under careers. Qualified perfectly and beautifully. So we know that it's not claiming to be the the, number one career podcast, but it's very qualified there and even explained further in the description. So that's number two, saying best the only or number one. And my number one podcasting cliche I think you should avoid, acting like radio. It's very true that podcasting is like radio, but it isn't radio. In radio, there are frequent, and many people will say, obnoxiously obsessive and long commercial breaks. And after a while, people might forget what they're listening to or they're tuning in during the commercial or anything like that. So then when the host returns after however many minutes of commercials there might be in traffic reports and news and sports updates and all of that stuff, stock and everything, then it does make sense to say we're back and to remind listeners to whom and to what they're listening at that moment. But a podcast doesn't need to do this. Because a podcast won't be interrupted by sports updates, traffic coverage, weather reports, anything like that. And most likely, when a person is listening and they're listening in the middle of the episode, they've been listening since the beginning. If someone forgets what they're listening to or watching, they could just look at their media player usually and see what they're listening to or watching. But to remind them of that quite regularly is a bit unnecessary. That's what radio does. That Radio shows often have certain formats and styles because of the nature of live radio. This could be station IDs or live callers, a certain daily schedule they have to adhere to, these commercial breaks and sports news breaks and the stock news and weather and traffic and all of this, they might have certain time constraints that their shows have to be only a certain amount of time and they have to go to commercial break or anything like that. And also they have to watch out for that channel surfing, which might be an American saying, but those people who are just flipping through or turning the knob through the radio and stumble across the show, they need to catch that person's attention and keep that person's attention. But a podcast doesn't have to do any of these things because podcasts are not distributed in this same way. Almost no one will accidentally channel surf into the middle of your podcast episode. They've most likely been listening from the beginning and they can see what they're listening to. If you wanted to be relevant and remind people what you're listening to, there is a good principle to keep in mind here, the context of things. And you could remind people what you're talking about instead of always using terms like this or that. Or, for example, with the movie review, instead of always saying the movie, this movie, but in the movie, in the show, in this episode, that kind of thing, you can be a bit more specific. And it often helps, like especially, I see this all the time with when people do reviews or brief mentions of software, they'll say the name of the program at the beginning of the review. And then the rest of the review, they'll just say it. And they'll never say again what it is until maybe at the end. So at one point, you don't even know at the beginning if you care what this item is or if you care about checking it out. But then a little bit later on, you realize, oh, that sounds really cool. What what is this thing again? And you'd have to rewind in order to find it out. Very inconvenient. It'd just be so much better for your listeners if you would occasionally be specific and give that context, reset that context. So tying this into the thing about the station identification and welcoming people back to your podcast. Well, if you really wanted to do something like that and be relevant, I don't think you need to remind them what podcast they're listening to or who you are. But if you wanted to remind them of something, you could remind them what we're covering in or what you are covering in that episode just in case they forgot. Like you may have forgotten that I'm sharing with you six podcasting cliches you should avoid. Maybe you didn't forget. But see, I just reminded you what it was. But I didn't tell you you're listening to Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com. It's a little unnecessary. Don't act like radio. And very connected to this, keep in mind that podcasts are not radio shows. 
Just like I said in my number five point, radio is also a media restrictive term. It refers to certain uh, waves of light that go through the air and are broadcast in a certain way. But you can, and maybe you probably even should, use the term radio to help explain what you do, but you probably shouldn't call what you do a radio show because it's not broadcast over the radio. People can't tune in. It's not distributed over the radio. It's very different. For example, here's what I typically do when someone asks me, what do you do? I'll often use a phrase. I'll say something like, well, I'm an internet broadcaster. Do you know what a podcast is? I ask them that. And then often they'll say, no, I don't. Even sometimes when they say, well, I think I do, unless they have that definite look of recognition on their face where they say, yeah, I know what a podcast is. I listened to a couple or something like that where I know that they know what a podcast is. Usually then I would give some response similar to this. I would say a podcast is like, notice I didn't say is a, I said is like a radio or TV show. I share opinions, uh, answer questions, teach things, host interviews, and in general do some talking like a talk show. But to enjoy a radio or TV show, you have to tune in at just the right time on just the right station. A podcast is something you can subscribe to often for free so you can automatically receive every episode on your smartphone, in your email, or even in your car. You can listen to or watch it at your convenience, and you can find shows that are about only what you care about. And you can skip episodes, or you can replay episodes. You can find one person you like on your content when there are many people talking about the same content. So I have used something they're familiar with, radio or TV shows, to then relate it to something new. But I did not say I'm an internet radio show. That That's really a mix of terms. It's like saying neon black or that's a Super Bowl home run. It's just an improper mix or inappropriate mix of terminology. So I really recommend you do not act like your podcast is a radio show. This can go for certain bumpers you might use or sound effects or styles or processing or approach. You can take this many different directions in terms of how this applies to your podcast. But in general, remember, you are not a radio show. So you don't have to act like one. Act the way that you think fits your content best. And that may be completely different from a radio show, or it might be very similar to a radio show. That's the awesome thing about podcasting is that you are in total control and you can podcast in any way that you want. So you can act like a radio show if you really want to, or you could act completely differently. That's why the Audacity to Podcast is called the Audacity to Podcast. Look up the word Audacity in the dictionary. It's basically talking about the guts. So podcasting is about having the guts to do something different, to carve your own path. So these top six, my top six podcasting cliches you should avoid. Number six, ignoring international and time-shifted audiences. Number five, having podcast or weekly or some other time uh, title in your show title. Number four, using an RSS icon, microphone, or headphones in your cover art. Number three, listing in the podcasting category. Number two, saying you're the best or the or the only or the number one. And number one, acting like radio. Now, I might have ruffled some feathers with some of this content, and I would love to hear about it. Let's talk about it in the comments over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 130. I would love to, you know, do you disagree with some of these things? Have you had experience with some of these things? What do you think? What would you add to this list? How do you disagree? And please remember, I'm not attacking any podcast out there. And I'm not necessarily saying you have to change because that's the thing about podcasting. You can really do it any way that you want. But these are just certain things that I think you should avoid. So please comment on the show notes over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 130 and let me know what you think of this content and how it hits you. 
Like I mentioned earlier on, as a little hint in the podcast, we are hosting another Podcasters Roundtable very soon. We currently have one scheduled for Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, GMT minus four, for June 18th, 2013. But in case that schedule ever changes, or if you ever want to check out the latest episodes, then you can always go to podcastersroundtable.com. We'll be talking about media hosting And should you host it on your own web server? Should you get a media host? What are the different options out there when you might want to consider one or the other? And do you really need media hosting? Can you get away with certain things? It'll be a great conversation because we've got some people from some very diverse backgrounds. Even one of my fellow Tech Podcast Network podcasters, Jeffrey Powers, who podcasts uh, the Geekazine and Tech News Today, or Day in Tech History, that's it, and the iPad 365 show, and he's got several others. But he hosts his media on, I think he said, six different places, depending on the show and in the context. And I'm hosting my media in two different places. So this will be a great conversation. And I think you'll love this. Check it out at podcastersroundtable.com. And you can circle Ray Ortega or myself on Google Plus for when we announce this because we host this as a Google Plus Hangouts on air. You can follow me on Google Plus at gplus.to slash djl. That's gplus.to slash djl is my link. And I believe Ray Ortega is gplus.to slash Ray Ortega. But if you just search for him and you find the one that does not say this is not the correct account in his image, then you found the right one. So check that out, podcastersroundtable.com. And I'm loving seeing what people are doing with the subscribe and follow plugin that I created. And please check it out for your website. Like I mentioned in Dave Jackson's recent interview of me over at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 358. I think that if you install this social subscribe and follow icons plugin, your website is instantly awesome for podcasts, blogs, whatever. And I've got some cool updates coming out for that too. Check it out at subscribe and follow. Dot com. Lastly, I would love to help you podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue so that you can get your podcast going with success and avoid some of these cliches in podcasting. Please go to the audacity to podcast.com slash consulting to set an, an appointment with me, and I'd love to work with you. Also, send me your feedback and questions and suggestions for future episodes by emailing feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com. You can also pick up the phone any time of the day and leave a voicemail at 903-231-2221 or go to theaudacitypodcast.com on your computer or iOS device and send a voice message right from the website to me. Again, please let me know what you thought of this content. I'd love to hear from you. Go to theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 130 to comment on this and share with me whether you agree, disagree, if you want to fight over any of these things or anything like that. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for leaving ratings and reviews on iTunes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash iTunes. Remember to also check out my YouTube channel at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash YouTube and follow me on Twitter at the ramen noodle. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Thank you for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Like you can learn about personal productivity from beyond the to-do list. You can theorize about the TV show Once Upon a Time from Once Podcast. You can laugh with our clean comedy podcast, The Ramen Noodle. You can get Christian critical thinking on movies from Are You Just Watching, Build a Christian Worldview from Christian Meets World, and more to come at noodle.mx. The Audacity to Podcast is also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Find more at techpodcasts.com. We've got some awesome new episodes out from the Game Over Podcast or the Day in Tech History Podcast and TPN Weekly, which I will be in episode 101 talking about some interesting things with iOS 7 and iPhones and